All right, folks, for all you out there who've been holding out hope that blood oxygen saturation or SpO2 tracking would come back to the US for your Apple Watch Series 9, 10, or Ultra 2, well, today is that day. And don't worry, you don't need to go out and buy a brand new Apple Watch to get this. This is all coming from a software update, but I did also want to go over a few important things to know about this, which we'll get into in this video. So for a really quick history lesson, so a few years ago, there's a patent dispute between Apple and a company called Massimo over the blood oxygen saturation tracking feature on Apple Watches. And this specifically affected Apple Watches sold in the US. And what happened is that Apple basically was not allowed to sell any new Apple Watches in the US with this feature, but it wasn't like they had to completely redesign the Apple Watch without the hardware and like that. They just couldn't offer that specific feature in the US. So basically from that time a few years ago when that ruling originally went down until, well, yesterday, any new series 9, 10, and Ultra 2 sold in the US wouldn't have this feature. But for all you lucky enough to get an Apple Watch with SPO2 before this date, well, you all kind of like slid into home plate and were lucky enough to get it before the change. And again, Apple Watches sold outside the US weren't affected. But that all changes today due to a recent US customs ruling. And this isn't just for new Apple Watches. Any of you out there already with Series 9, 10, or Ultra 2s that weren't lucky enough to get this feature originally can now get this feature via a simple software update. So if you had an Apple Watch that didn't have this feature enabled, what happened when you went to go use the Blood Auction app on your Apple Watch is that you would get this message saying that this feature is no longer available. But now with the software update, it'll be enabled and what you'll first need to do is update your iPhone to iOS 18.6.1 or later and then update your Apple Watch to watch OS 11.6.1 or later and then after that when you go to the blood auction app on your Apple Watch it should say something along the lines of the blood auction app has changed and it'll guide you through the onboarding steps to take a reading and then after that you can take a blood auction saturation reading and then you can view that information to the health app on your iPhone. Now here's the what you need to know part about this so first off there's actually a slight difference here and how the blood auction app works on previous Apple watches versus this redesigned app is what they're calling it. So with this redesigned app, you'll do the blood auction saturation reading on the watch, of course, but notice that it actually doesn't provide you with the actual reading on the watch. You actually have to go in the health app on your phone to view the information. If you did a blood auction reading on, let's say something like an Apple Watch Ultra 1 running watch OS 11, it does the reading, but it also shows the result on the watch itself after the reading. With this redesigned app, it doesn't show the results after the reading. You actually have to see your results in the health app on your iPhone. Now, one important thing to note is that if you're using the watch OS 26 beta, so this doesn't seem to have rolled out for beta users quite yet, at least at the time of this filming. And unfortunately, I don't have any information on timing either, but September is right around the corner, which is usually right around the time Apple transitions the public beta to full production. So I guess that would probably be included when that comes out or possibly even sooner, but I'll make sure to keep you updated on if and when that happens for watch OS 26. However, one thing I did test though, is that with this specific series 10 that I was using for this demo, so I actually had it on a watch OS 26 beta on one iPhone that was running the public beta. And then I actually was able to reset it and then repair it to another iPhone that's still running iOS 18. And it, everything still seemed to work. I did not try to downgrade my main phone from iOS 26 to iOS 18 though, but if any of you out there are willing to try that, and I'm not necessarily recommending that you do one way or the other, because this is all just beta stuff, do so at your own risk. But if you do, let us all know how that goes. Again, at your own risk. But that's basically it. And again, what's kind of nice about this update is that all it requires is a software update. Anyhow, just a quick little video I wanted to do to let you all know about this new update. And if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a quick favor and just hit that like button down below. And it's also a really good time of year to make sure that you subscribe to the channel and have that little notification bell icon on. September is going to be a ridiculous month when it comes to sports tech, so you definitely want to stay tuned. In the meantime, have fun out there and we will see you in the next video.